Today on Ahead of the Curve, some high-tech language translation and from the silver screen straight to iTunes. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Ahead of the Curve. I'm David Curley in Washington with 15 minutes to try and keep you ahead of the technology wave. And we begin with some IBM researchers who have come up with what may be the first speech-enabled motorcycle helmet. And it could have applications in a whole lot of different areas. And joining us today to show us this technology, we are joined by Vit Labal and Roberta Sacconi from IBM Research. Gentlemen, thanks very much. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff here and we're going to explain how this helmet would work. What are we trying to hope, what are we trying to accomplish by basically enabling our helmet to see what we're saying? Well, speech recognition has been available for cars uh, for some time now, and it's uh, starting to get a little more pervasive. Uh, the problem, the biggest problem you have is uh, dealing with noise, noise in the car, noise generated by the tires, by the wind, by the rain, and by the people sitting inside the car. <clears throat> so we decided to attack the problem by looking at uh, visual clues that you can get out of lips, much like you do when you look in watch the face of another person. So you're basically using a camera to read the lips to make sure the computers, if it can't hear it, that it can see what you're saying. Correct. And the things I want to do here are to uh, learn about the motorcycle, navigate, run an MP3 player, something like that? It's, that's right. The, uh, the reason for uh, the motorcycle helmet uh, is that uh, in the car, <clears throat> because you're not allowed to, to come anywhere closer to the face of the driver, you have to position the, the camera far away and the microphone is far away, so you, you can do some of that what, of what we mentioned, but uh, with, with some constraints. In a motorcycle uh, case, uh, you, you have the advantage of the driver forced to wear a helmet, and then uh, at that point you can put a camera in, in the tip of uh, uh, the helmet uh, facing the mouth uh, without having to the need to find the face, find the lips. Uh, Vit, the why don't you sh uh, sorry to interrupt you, Roberto, but Vit, show us the helmet where you've got this set up, the, the technology you've already put into the helmet. Right, so this is an um, audio-visual uh, speech recognition helmet. Um, you can't uh, maybe follow what is so special about this helmet. Actually, there is uh, nothing special about the design. It's just off-shelf off-shelf helmet that I bought in the next buy bike store but we have equipped in our lab this helmet with a camera placed right here to follow the speaker's lips there is a microphone to uh, hear the audio signal what speaker is speaking and then uh, there are two IR LEDs providing illumination for speaker's uh, lip area so camera is uh, monochrome camera which is IR sensitive that's near IR right. sensitive and there is also IR filter on it to block out most of the visible uh, light and we do have a lot of light here so we may dim the lights here as we try and demonstrate this technology and we also have a speaker here where we're going to create noise so we're kind of trying to create the situation if you're riding a motorcycle and you want to tell the motorcycle to do something right. which would be either tell me how to get to the next uh, hotel or whatever, right? That's right. So um, I also wanted to point out that, that at this moment we have equipped the camera with a wireless connection Which to our great, computer. Which so is you don't have a wire going and from your helmet down to the right. motorcycle. The, uh, when I wear it, I will uh, demonstrate how it works and I will uh, say digit strings. This is how our system is trained at the moment. Okay. It recognizes uh, strings of, of digits. Okay. In the future, of course, we are counting on... MP3 on player, iPod, whatever you want to say. To recognize right. whatever okay. you can say. Right. Good. So. Well, give it a shot. Let's throw it on, and then we're going to create some noise here and uh, let you uh, see if we can actually hear it. So there's our motorcycle noise, and I see that you're not speaking, but this is just looking to see if it actually reads your lips correctly, right? Right, so what we can see is th we reached 70% uh, accuracy f using audiovisual engine being set to lip reading only because uh, I, I have set it up so it reads only my lips. It doesn't actually listen to the microphone signal. While audio only signal using only microphone signal, that means only audio signal, gave uh, quite uh, non-sensual result which is expected uh, under these noise conditions and, and this is why the, the camera makes such the big difference of right. reading the lips because the audio basically is almost unusable you can't you 
can't hear it. It couldn't, it couldn't discern what you're saying, but reading the lips works. I notice it. Uh, how does it actually do it? I see the two little uh, cursors, I guess, on the edge of the lips. It's, uh, you're, you're, you form your words a certain way, and it, it figures it out? Right. Well, uh, the two uh, crosses that you've seen on the screen, they were actually uh, tracking of the mouth corners, which provides, um, let's say, um, points for normalization of the mouth area. So someone has a uh, larger mouth, someone has uh, smaller, sometimes the camera is not perfectly positioned and this is uh, how we are trying uh, to uh, normalize the image for every situation. Seems like a lot of work you guys put <laughs> into this trying to figure out what I'm saying with my lips uh, moving. Now you mentioned that this has applications elsewhere uh, and you brought in a headset here. This is uh, you mentioned it could be used in the military or something else, right? Yeah, actually the uh, the whole project really started uh, looking at uh, other areas like uh, uh, train force, but the agents uh, who are screaming uh, with others uh, screaming right, right by, and, and they have problems getting recognized. So if they want to speech command uh, information to a system, so they, uh, they, they are out of luck. Uh, so, so what you've done here basically is just take a regular headset yes. and the difference is it has the camera so it will also read yes. your lips. Exactly, and the camera and the microphone, yes. And then how would that data be transformed to the person you're trying to communicate with? Would it be a computer voice then would take over since you can't hear the voice but it no, it's read your lips? Well, what, what you want to get is just the orders. So you transcribe what the person is saying and, uh, and then you use the commands. Now this is kind of a, a new field, uh, and we've heard voice recognition for so long now yes. that's uh, been going on, and, and we're making big progress there. Is this just an indication of how far the interface between humans and computers is going to come in the next five years or so? Yes. Well, today the, there are limitations. Even even if in, in the best systems in cars, uh, if you start the lowering the windows, opening the roof, uh, uh, the uh, turbulence generated by the wind is going to make a uh, speech a regular speech recognition. Uh, nearly useless and uh, you don't want to force people to to sweat in the car right. because they want to get recognized better right. so we have to come up with solutions that uh, allow systems to, to perform better in and, and more robustly than and today. what is your sense on this system until a motorcycle rider might be able to go out and purchase this and put it on his bike well in case of a motorcycle the situation is even more extreme because uh, taking the, the hands off of the bar uh, in, and fiddling with the touch screen, especially if you have the gloves on, is uh, nearly impossible. So, so but when will I see dangerous. this? When do you think I'll see this technology in the marketplace? It's, it's a matter of a few years. And, uh, and the good thing is that this uh, has no direct impact in the design of a motorcycle. Everything can be attached on top of it, so it's sort of an aftermarket uh, kind of opportunity right. I can, can find much faster. Uh, anything embedded in a car, for instance, it has to go through long incubation cycles. But Roberto, and th thank you very much for bringing in this stuff. It's pretty exciting to think that uh, in the next few years we may actually be able to talk to our motorcycle and have us tell us where to go. Appreciate it. Both thank of you, you coming My in. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And coming up, the internet hype behind this past weekend's big movie. <laughs> Thank you.